the theme of the meeting for tonight is the altar and it says return and so for for us to understand properly the essence of the entire um, teaching or the entire theme tonight I'll be dealing with the altar that's what I'll deal with tonight I'll deal with the altar tonight and then tomorrow we can now delve into other things so as much as you can just pay attention as much as you can pay attention I'll not be spending a lot of time tonight I will not spend a lot of time tonight I promise <laughs> I promise you I won't spend a lot of time tonight I'll have time a lot of time with you tomorrow I believe I'll spend a lot of time tonight but I want you to pay attention the things I have to share with you are they're not deep per se they are elementary things but I don't know why it still sounds laughing but it's fine but they are elementary things and if you pay attention you get the things you want to share now I want to begin by defining the altar because one of the challenges of the Christian or the Christian faith of believers is man of God we say a lot of things use a lot of terms without even knowing the meaning are you with me tonight? I only heard two persons. Are you with me tonight? Yes, sir. Thank you. We well, are young people here. Normally, if you were on WhatsApp, you won't be feeling tired by now. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> so, one of the challenges of the Christian dom is that we use a lot of terms that we don't even know the meaning of. Yeah, that's true. For example, we like using dimensions and portals, but how many of us really understand the meaning of portals and dimensions? And realms. And so as I prayed, the Lord gave me a burden. How many of us really understand the meaning of a burden? Someone who just said he received a burden is laughing with another person. Men with burdens, you don't find them laughing anyhow. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm just saying all of this to say to you that a lot of times we use terms that we don't even understand the meanings yet. And that's how it is. So tonight, we... we a lot of people use the word altar. But how many people really know what it means? How many people understand? So that's where we're going to begin from tonight. And then we're going to delve into a lot of things the Lord will have us do. So as much as we can, if we can, let's cut down on the movement. Let's cut down on the movement as much as we can. Let's just, you know, let's honor the Holy Spirit. As much as we can. As much as we can. Except it's very important. Except it's very important. So what's an altar? An altar is a place where the divine and the human worlds meet. Let's begin like that. An altar is a place where the divine and the human worlds meet or interact. That's what an altar is. Having this understanding will bring us to notice that I did not say it's a place where Christians and God meet. I said it's a place where the divine and humans interact. Are you following what I'm saying? This could mean that there's the negative divine and the positive divine. And so to this effect, both um, the devil and his guys and God and his guys, they meet with humans. I hope you know that. God, I hope you know that. So the meeting point is called an altar. It's called the altar. Well, for my emphasis throughout this teaching, I'm talking about the positive divine. We don't have any business with the negative divine. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. Negative divine is witchcraft, right? Demons and all of that. We don't have any business with them tonight. We didn't come to teach demonology. What we just came to talk about is the altar. And it's, it's us. We're talking about the positive divine. So an altar is a place where the divine and humans meet and interact. Without an altar, there will be no interaction. Without an altar, there will be no interaction. Without an altar, there will be no discussion. We can't tap into the realms of the supernatural. You see the word realms again now. So we can't tap into the supernatural except there's an altar. Are you following what I'm saying? Please follow me. I'm going somewhere. I, I'm, not, I'm not jumping. I don't want to jump too much. I just want to talk. 
Can I talk to you? All right. And so, to continue, I'll just talk about altars in the old covenant, altars in the new covenant, and then we fly from that place. Now, if you read from Genesis, you're going to find out that there are altars spoken about. Genesis chapter 9, chapter 8. Let's do chapter 8, verse 20. If we can get that on the screen. I really love to see that. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. I want to show you from the old covenant. All right. Can we read together Genesis 8, 20? Everybody want to go? Then Noah built an altar. He built what? Take note of that. Noah built what? Now, let's read down to verse 22. Let's read down to verse 22. So let's read down to verse 22. Go on. Let's get back to verse 20. Let's start from verse 20. We're reading from 20 to 22. Can we read together now? Everybody want to go? Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on where? Next verse, 21. Uh-huh. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. Next verse. Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Go to chapter 9 verse 1. Let's read together. Everybody want to go? So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Can we read that again? Everybody want to go? So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Where did this blessing happen? At the altar. Are you following what I'm saying? Come on, are you here with me? So after the flood, Noah presented before the Lord. First of all, he built an altar and then he presented before the Lord clean animals, sacrifice. We're going to come to that, what we do on the altar. We'll come to that. How to activate an altar. We'll get to that place. But Noah presented it before the Lord. And afterwards, God gave his blessing to Noah and his sons. So you see, Noah presented something and received something. That's called an interaction. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. So if you say you visited an altar and then the interaction is not two-way, then you really did not visit an altar. Are you following what I'm saying? Every time there's a visitation on your altar, every time you visit your altar, whether it's your prayer altar or whatever, every time you visit it, I don't want to run ahead of myself. Every time you visit it, there's going to be an interaction. Something must happen to you, for you, or in you. Are you following what I'm saying? Something must happen to you, happen for you, or in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Genesis 12 verse 7 Genesis chapter 12 verse 7 12 verse 7 This is verse 2 Genesis 12 7 Can we read together? Everybody want to go? Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him Can, can we read together? I can hear only two persons Want to go? And said To your descendants I will give this land And there Hold on And there he did what? So in this scenario, God spoke first and Abraham responded by building an altar. Interaction. Are you following what I'm saying? This now brings me to say to you that every time God speaks, you should be willing to war with what God has said. Are you here? Don't just allow the speakings of God to pass you by. Every time there is speaking by God, learn to war with it. Learn to war with it. What I mean is learn to pray with it. Learn to hold on to the things that God has spoken. It is one thing that believers must learn to do. He built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Genesis chapter 26 verse 25. I just want to show you altars in the old covenant, right? Genesis 26, 25. Can we read together? Everybody want to go? So he built an altar there and called, this is Isaac. First we saw Noah, then we saw Abraham. And now we're seeing Isaac. So he built what? And called on the name of the Lord. The altar is a place where you can call on the name of the Lord. Oops. God help me. Alright, Genesis 28, verse 18. Genesis 28, verse 18. 28, 18. Can we read together? Everybody want to go? Then Jacob rose early in the morning 
and took the stone that he has put at his head, set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. What he did was consecrate an altar. Somebody say altar. altar. It's a place of interaction. He woke up in the middle of the night and said, ah, the Lord was here and I did not know. How about in the New Testament? The highest altar that was ever built or that was ever laid is Calvary. Are you following what I'm saying tonight? Oh, bring out music a little bit. The highest altar that, that's ever been built is the altar of Calvary. On that altar, listen, it wasn't the blood of bulls or rams that were sacrificed there who we'll come to that place, but it wasn't the blood of bulls or, ram, or rams, it was the blood of Jesus. Let me say it like this, maybe it will make sense. It was the blood of, of God. Did, did you hear what I said? I hope you know Jesus was not 50% God and 50% man. I hope you know he was 100% God and 100% man. While he was on earth, while he walked this earth, Jesus was both God and man. Pastor Success, come sit. Come sit down here. Come sit. Come. You shouldn't be standing by now. You have walked a lot. You have labored. Come and enter into your rest. <laughs> Can we celebrate the man of God? God bless you. Enter into your rest. You have labored. So, the highest altar is the altar of Calvary. And on this altar, it was the blood of Jesus that activated it. So I just showed you one. Now, in the Old Covenant, you'd notice, people are wondering, this guy is boring. Sorry, don't worry. Just, just follow me. Follow me. We are going somewhere with this. Are you here? Meanwhile, I bring you greetings from my wife. Yes, she is supposed to. So that, um, just in case. Okay, let's let's get back to let's get back to the. <laughs> in the old covenant, you notice that altars were built physically by hands. What you see in the new covenant, things have changed. We no longer build altars by our hands. John chapter 4 verse 23. Put that on the screen very quickly. Let's run from there. John chapter 4 verse 23. Jesus was speaking to the woman by the well, the woman of Samaria. And he said to her, but the hour is coming. Tell your neighbor, say the hour is coming. And now is when true worshippers will worship the Father. Where? I didn't hear you. Where? He did not say, the, listen, I hope you know that worshipping the Father in spirit and in truth is not a how. Only few persons just got what I said. Okay, let's back up these verses. Back it up. Back it up to where the woman was speaking. And she said, you know, our fathers worshipped on this mountain. Back it up to that place. Back it up. Maybe, I, I think, yeah, verse 20. Okay. Can we, can we read from verse 20 together so that we'll get a background? Everybody want to go? Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. So you see the, the, the woman's issue was an issue of a location for worship. Are you following? Alright, next verse 21. Jesus said to her, uh -huh, continue, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship. So you see, Jesus was telling her, we're about to shift the location of your altar from physical to something different. Are you following what I'm saying here? In the old covenant, Noah had to build. In the new covenant, God has built. Are you following what I'm saying at all? Okay. You know, you probably thought I'm boring. Relax. Let's not run ahead of ourselves. I don't want to rush you. I want you to get the background. If you get the background of the things I'm teaching you this night. Urasi bradelia kapana. Some things will change in your life forever. You know they used to do altar versus altar. Hey God, have you ever seen that kind of program before? Altar versus altar. So they are now doing God's altar versus. See, it you are, you are demeaning God. Oh God, it is me versus the altar. You didn't hear me. Okay, go back to twenty-one. Let's go from twenty-one. That's how he's doing me this night. 
Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will kneel down on this mountain, not in Jerusalem. Worship the Father. Now, verse 22. You worship what you do not know. We, wash, we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Now, verse 23. He now says, For the hour is coming. Can we read it together? And now is. When the true worshippers will worship the Father, where? And where? So, in spirit and in truth is what? A location. Are you following what I'm saying? In the old covenant, the altar was built by hands. In the new covenant, God is saying, this altar is no longer a physical location. So in the old covenant, every time they needed to worship, they had to find that place they had built. In the new covenant, every time we want to worship or pray, we simply tune into a location. Are you following what I'm saying? And that location is with us everywhere. I want to show you Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 22. Orasipatayaka. Oh, great Eli Safra. You need to stay with me, Ned. Kobarata. Can we read together? Hebrews 12, 22. Everybody want to go? But you have come where? I didn't hear you. You have come where? It is not tonight you came to Mount Zion. The day you came into Jesus and made him your Lord and your personal Savior. From that day you came into Mount Zion. Tell yourself, I'm in Mount Zion. I'm in the city of the living God. So, every time you're walking the earth, and suddenly you realize that things are not so in order. All you need to do is to tune into the other side. Did you hear what I said? The believer moves with Mount Zion. The believer moves with Mount Zion. And you know how beautiful it is. Mount Zion is big enough to enter anywhere. And it's small enough to enter anywhere. Oh, Mount Zion can expand and compress depending on where you are in. Are you following what I'm saying? So if I'm in a Boeing 737 in an airplane, an aircraft, Mount Zion entered with me. Are you here with me? I come into this room. Mount Zion compresses and enters with me. I enter a tricycle. I'm going to school. Mount Zion compresses and enters with me. He says, but you have come to where? city of the living God and to the heavenly Jerusalem since you have come to an innumerable company of angels not one not two not a thousand innumerable company if we can count them then it's not innumerable are you following what I'm saying here God said to Abraham he said I will make your descendants as plenty as the sands of the seashore if a man can count them then they can count your descendants you think you've been able to count the descendants of Abraham then you are lying you know why because there are spirits of just men made perfect who are part of the descendants of Abraham you didn't hear what I said you didn't hear so there are both physical and spiritual descendants of Abraham you didn't hear me every man who walked by faith my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. So in the new covenant, we no longer build altars physically. The location has changed now. It's a spiritual location. We're not looking for stones or wood or whatever to build it. So when you come into a church and they tell you this is the altar of the church, Really, that is not the altar of the church. He is the podium, the stage. Are you following what I'm saying? The true altar is activated when the man. Stay here with me. We are here for you. Give me some volume. Come and do what you do. Set hearts on you. What you do, cause this is the move. Ah, now my I am your move. Did you hear what I just sang tonight? Cause I am your move. Oh, rapa hatele kebai. I am your move. Oh, rapa papa parata bai. I am your move. Oh, rapa papa ratela. I am your move. Shepe pelie te kaba. I am your move. I am Can I hear you declare? I am your move. Say I am your move. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I am your move. Yes. Stay. 
stage is a podium so that everybody in the hall can see you can't really call this place the altar now are you following what i'm saying the altar is a spiritual location and every one of us can tune into that place when you hear about the move of God, the move of God is not something abstract that will come from heaven. The move of God is not a river that will come from heaven. The move of God is when a man who has understood his place in God begins to move. Is someone getting what I'm saying? When God activates a man and sets him, that is God on the move. My God. My God. My God. My God. My God. So right now, we all have become like moving on mobile altars. Because we can tune into that realm anytime. Are you following what I'm saying? Hey God, are you following what I'm saying? You see, in the old covenant, for a sacrifice to be made, three things have to be available. The priest, the altar, the sacrifice. Hey. The priest... The altar and the sacrifice. The priest, the altar, and the sacrifice. Jesus, your high priest. Jesus on Calvary, the altar. Jesus hanging on the cross, the sacrifice. However, let's take it a little deeper. Chris Okolo, kings and priests. Romans chapter 12, I beseech you that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Christ will call up the sacrifice. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? Back it up, back it up. Okay, verse 19. Verse 19. Verse 19. Or do you not know? Paul got to a point and he turned to the Corinthian church. He got to a point, he looked at the Corinthian church and he says, What? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, What? And he said, Neighbor, What? Paul, Paul was so upset with him. He says, What? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Every time you think about this, the first thing that comes to your mind is fornication. But listen, if a man truly understands what it means that his body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, even fornication will not be a thought in your mind. Are you following what I'm saying? It won't be a problem. Hey God, I was speaking to people one time and I said to them, every time you went to sleep with that boy, as a born again child of God, every time you went to sleep with that girl, you were sleeping with the person with the Holy Ghost on your inside. So now you must begin to think of the kind of agony that you caused the Holy Ghost that is on your inside. Are you following what I'm saying? Every time you commit a sin, it shouldn't be a question of whether I will go to heaven or to hell. It should be a question of the agony that you cause the Holy Ghost that is resident on your inside. It says what? Don't you know that your body is not really about fornication right now? It's not just that. When you realize that your body is a temple, you realize that in every temple there's an altar. So you have become a moving, a mobile altar. Tell them I'm a mobile altar. I didn't hear you say I'm a mobile altar. So what this means is that everywhere I get to, I can offer sacrifices. Everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. So when we are doing something like this, we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house. Can we sing it? Of Oh, sing it, sing it. We bring. Sing it, sing it. Into the house. Now declare as we offer. Let God hear you. A sacrifice. Sacrifice. Seas of thanksgiving as we. Sacrifices. Oh. 
So every time you raise up a song like this, you must realize that it is not just the songs that are the sacrifice. God first looks at the man before he looks at what the man brings. Are you getting what I'm saying? So every time we come before God, we must have the understanding that we are presenting ourselves first before we present the songs. God first listens to the aroma and the fragrance you bring before he listens to the sacrifice of praise that comes out of your lips. Are you following what I'm saying? He said he accepted Abel and his sacrifice. He didn't say he accepted the sacrifice and Abel. He said the Lord had respect unto Abel and his sacrifice. So God has respect to the man first. God is looking at the man first before what the man brings. This is why every time you come before God, you must learn to offer yourself first. learning something tonight are you learning something tonight you yourselves have become moving altars mobile altars mobile my god the level of fear that believers carry is, is alarming is alarming you know and they've sucked it up with wisdom you know you have to be wise You know, you need to be wise so that you need to be a wise man. Don't move in the night, be wise. Smart man. Don't move in the night. You know, we have to be safe. The, the country is not safe anymore. But we see, at 2 a.m. I'm on the road. Two, they know. Two, I'm, I travel with first sons. First sons. Some of them only children. Only children. 2 a.m., 3 a.m. on the road. One of these, we were going to Osuka. We left the house by 12. 12 midnight. We slept off. We left by 12. I told you, right? Left by 12 midnight. That's when we left for Osuka. You know, and it was that period they just finished kidnapping people on that road. Are you following what I'm saying? If I'm in a tricycle and the guy is driving anyhow, I warn him for his sake. Do you hear what I said? Men on assignment don't die anyhow. Are you following what I'm saying? We don't. I've said it publicly, secretly. Devil can do nothing about my life. You know why I'm saying all of this? You need to jettison fear. If you have the understanding that you are an altar, the Bible says the people of Israel were warring against Moab. And suddenly the king took his son and slew him at the city wall. And the Bible says that indignation. Are you following what I'm saying? The Lord turned against Israel. Israel were God's people. I'm going somewhere with this story. Israel were God's own people. Thank you. Second Kings chapter 3. He took his eldest son. Who should have reigned in his step? Are you aware that this is almost equal to what God did? You didn't hear what I said. You didn't hear what I said. God's Ativa. He offered him upon the wall to an idol. And there was great indignation against Israel. So when you meet a challenge on the road, listen, this is why I'm bringing up this story. When you meet a challenge on the road, don't start thinking of a solution. You are the priest, the altar, the sacrifice. Offer something. Do you hear what I said? Offer what? Oh God. Are you, are you even following what I'm saying at all? Offer something. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. So Ramahandra Sibahai. So how are altars activated? Altars activated. Listen, an altar is not truly an altar except there's a spirit in charge. Are you following what I'm saying? A spirit has to be placed in charge of that altar. This is why, sir, trees seem to have power. Are you following what I'm saying? Oh God, are you following what I'm saying? This is why in some communities, snakes seem to have power. Tortoises. In some places, fishes, fishes. 
Because for an altar to be activated, a spirit has to take charge. It is called the spirit taking its domain. And so for us to activate our altar, the spirit has to take the way. How do we do that? How do we do that? Number one, number one, we must be consistent in worship. Are you following what I'm saying? We must be consistent in worship. Or like I like to call it, we must be consistent in paying homage. Nigerian movies to explain this thing to you because some of you, some of, so how many of us watch Nigerian movies? How many of us? All right, let me use that to explain this a little to you. You know, just for emphasis purpose. You, you look at the movies and then you notice that someone, maybe someone for fathers, comes up and offers a chicken on a tree on behalf of it and says, all my children will serve you forever and ever. Everybody that will come from my loins, they will serve you forever. Also, they offer up that chicken or the goat or whatever and say every year we're going to bring this goat or this chicken or this cow whatever it is we're going to offer it every year for some is human sacrifice whatever they just say every year once a year at this specific season we'll offer they do it every year till they die their sons pick it up and do it every year till they die their grandsons pick it up and do it every year till they die then suddenly your dad now says I'm born again. I don't want to do that anymore. Or he travels abroad. And then maybe he didn't get born again, but he travels abroad. <laughs> and he says, that's barbaric. We can't do this anymore. Listen, African demons don't understand this example. They don't understand English language. In fact, the, the, we don't communicate in the spirit by languages. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's authority. Are you following what I'm saying? So whether the, the English is right or wrong, so long as you, you have the right intent and your authority, they will respond. That's why a man can say to a demon spirit possessing a person, say, came out. A, a man can say to a demon spirit, came out. And the demon spirit will came out. You know why it will came out? Because the intent is that that spirit. So it is not about English language. So they can travel abroad and come back and say, listen, this is barbaric. We, we, we don't do this anymore. We don't do this anymore. That's how some people have tied, you know, have worn pajamas. And they came back from US wearing just pajamas. You know what I'm saying? They slept that night. And they, they, they slept in the U.S. and woke up in Nigeria. It, it's called an inter, intercontinental. <laughs> Please follow me. I'm saying all of this to say to you, that because they've been consistent over the years, the demon has built a stronghold around that place. Are you here with me? Oh God, are you here with me? Respond. Are you here with me? The demon has built a stronghold around the place so that when one man rises up to rebel, if he's not rebelling from the place of a higher altar, that demon rises up to begin to frustrate that entire generation. So suddenly the man says, I don't offer chickens anymore. The demon now begins to go after humans because what it is thirsty of is blood. Are you following what I'm saying? over you. Are you following what I'm saying? Don't you, you think strongholds are only negative? 
Don't you want to have positive strongholds? You didn't hear me. You, don't you want to have positive strongholds? You know, such that when they want to convict me, let it be that I pray too much. Are you following what I'm saying here? So they will look at Christ and say, what, what has he done wrong? They looked for something against Daniel and all they could find was against his God. They said, listen, let no man pray to any God or any man for 30 days except the king. But listen, Daniel had been taught that you don't bow before other men. Are you following what I'm saying here? Daniel said, we can't bow before any other men. The Bible says the moment he heard it, he went back to his room. He opened the windows facing Jerusalem. He knelt down and then he prayed facing Jerusalem. And then the law had been made. That law was supposed to kill Daniel. But are you aware that Solomon prayed some years ago? And he said, Lord, if anyone prays facing Jerusalem, please can you respond to them? Please can you respond to them? So before this new law was made, a higher law had been made. It was made in the temple by the altar. Is someone for what I'm saying here so when they stood before when Daniel stood before the lions they could have no effect against him because a higher law had been activated is someone getting what I'm saying that's what is called stronghold it was so many years positive stronghold it was so many years after Solomon had died that Daniel faced the temple to pray so many years Are you aware that the, the place Jacob laid his head when he said God was here and I did not know. Are you aware it was Abraham? Is someone getting what I'm saying here? This is why when you hear wherever we step the sole of our feet, we possess. It is not just a physical possession. Are you following what I'm saying? Hey God, my father may not have built this house, but my father owns the land. Did you hear what I said? The earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. He says the heart of a king is in the hand of God and he turns it like a water course wherever he wills, wherever God decides. That's where he turns. That's what we call positive strongholds. So that thousands of years later my generation will still have a man or men who are standing for Jesus are you following what I'm saying here this is why we do what we do so that my three-year-old boy can put his hand on my stomach when I'm feeling pain and pray and the pain will disappear instantly I'm not telling you something that will happen I don't I'm telling you something that happened it's coming up with my wife one of those days from fellowship so much pain and I said babe I'm feeling pain and then my son ran up the stairs it was fun but he ran up the stairs and he put it on my son I said you are healed in Jesus name boo boo go now in Jesus name and instantly that's why we're building that, that's why we're doing what we're doing consistency if demon spirits can have post, can have negative strongholds and hold on to a generation, then let God lay hold of my generation. Everybody out of my loins, let God lay hold of them. That's what we are saying. And now you don't need to offer any goat. Jesus, that blood he, he said on the cross of Calvary is enough. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. Lord, I give you my generation. Can you cry out to God? Right here, right now, right here. In one minute, say, God, I give you my generation. Everybody that will come from my loins. You may not know what you're doing, but come on now, come on now, come on now. So, so pretty, yes, says a man. Say with me. I offer my life to Yahweh. I offer my life. 